So similar to a multiplexer, a demultiplexer is basically just the opposite of a multiplexer. So whereas a multiplexer will actually map multiple inputs to a single output, a demultiplexer will map a single input to multiple outputs, uh, depending on, of course, on a, a selection line. So this means that we can have, in the example here of a, a 1 to 2 demultiplexer, uh, we can send this input to either this output or this output, depending on what the state of this line is. And to build something like this is very, very similar to a multiplexer, of course. Uh, we're basically just going to have uh, an enable line again, controlling some buffers. And again, similar thing, we inverse it so that one is always on while the other is off. Uh, but this time, instead of connecting the buffers to an OR gate, what we're doing is we're actually just connecting them straight up to their appropriate outputs. Uh, and then all the buffers are pretty much connected together to the input. So the input comes in, it's going to go to both these buffers, and only one of them will actually allow it through, depending on the state of the control line here. So again, what that looks like in terms of a circuit is very, very simple. Uh, in fact, we can even go back to the discrete logic version. So again, we basically just need two buffers, which are just AND gates. Uh, but again, these outputs are going to be going to their own uh, appropriate outputs. And then we have an input, which is going to go to both buffers here. And we'll just connect it like that. I think that reaches, yep. And then lastly, we just have a control line, and we'll just throw that there like so. Okay, so now we have one input and two outputs, and by default this one is on. If we were to change the control line, this one will be on. Uh, but we can actually send an input. It's going to go to that output. And if we change the control line, which it actually isn't even connected by mistake, uh, then it, the input will actually go to the other output. So again, you can, of course, compress this circuit very, very easily, but there is another variation that we redstoners like to use. It's very similar to the single-wide multiplexer here, actually. In fact, it's pretty much the same, just backwards. So all we do is we create our input up here, staircase down, and then we just repeater out there. There's one output, and then a repeater there. And there's another output. And we do redstone on top like this. In fact, we really didn't even need this. We basically just need our input right here. And now you can see when we send a signal in with this lever, it goes down to the lower output. But if we were to block this wire, it actually gets disabled down there and enabled up here. So again, like before, all we need to do is just add a piston. And we now have a means of controlling this. And then, of course, very similar to the multiplexers, we can, of course, create multiple output multi or demultiplexers by either cascading these uh, dual output multiplexers, or excuse me, demultiplexers, uh, or a much easier solution is to just use enabled uh, buffers and decoders. So as you can see here, we've got four buffers here. They're all connected to a single input and they all have their own separate outputs and they are of course enabled by the output of this decoder here. So right now with 0, 0 if I were to actually send an input to the thing, uh, we actually get the output on the uh, 0, 0 output, but if I were to send it to the 1, 1 output, uh, you can see that it actually ends up on the 1, 1 output, and of course this works for everything in between as well. Of course there are other ways to build a demultiplexer as I've said with the multiplexer, and it's something that I would highly recommend experimenting with. Uh, but hopefully you can find some good uses for this, and even if you don't, it's still a nice useful circuit to know.